Whew. Okay. Uh, welcome back to some Spyro. It's uh, it's been a little while, like uh, five or so months. But you know, who's counting? Sorry about that. Kind of fell out of it for a bit. Don't really have an excuse other than general laziness. But uh, hopefully we can get back into it. Uh, last time we cleared out the Magic Crafters world. And we're heading off to Beastmakers. And Beastmakers, compared to all of this weird magic bullshit, might seem plain by comparison, but it's really not. Uh, the level- oh, jeez. Okay, well, that went badly. We can hopefully start that over. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Alright. The Beastmakers levels may seem boring by comparison, but they're really not. They're some of my favorite levels of the game, for one. And two, they're, uh... They're iconic. And like, a lot of people that played Spyro 1 back in the day remember these levels fondly. Or maybe not too fondly. Uh, the point is, these levels are memorable. Which might go against the kind of boring exterior they have. I mean, just... We can tell right away that these levels are going to be based on, on a kind of swamp motif, which a lot of games have done before. What is this game going to do any different? Well, what I like to believe is that, given constraints, a good creative team can turn anything into something new and refreshing. Give them a constraint like, hey, just make, make a bunch of swamp levels, and a good creative team will turn that into something cool. A bad one, of course, can make that kind of all seem samey and terrible. While we're here, by the way, uh, this is the best homeworld music in the game, straight up. Just want to put that out there so everyone knows. Let's see, how many gems we got? We got 300 gems and two dragons to find. And I know we usually hit the flight level maybe third or so, somewhere in the middle, but this time we're going to hit it first, and we'll let Bruno talk here, and then I'll explain why. Nasty Nork is turning our swamp into an electrified junk heap, and it used to be so beautiful. I'm sure it was. Nice contemplative moment, it's Spyro right there. So you've got Terrace Village over here, I believe up here is Misty Bog? It's been a while. I did, yep, I did practice these levels earlier at least, so at least we got that going for us. And of course we have the infamous treetops over yonder. Spyro, it's great to see you, but I've got to go. Well, okay, you could have just, like, cut that old bit there if you really needed to go that badly. You could have, um, you know, given the whole thanks for releasing me bit that all of your friends have done. And that would have been perfectly fine. But yeah, the reason we're doing the flight level first, as I collect some of these gems, is because I want to show you guys a clip from an old PlayStation Underground interview. Now, PlayStation Underground was a kind of digital magazine that Sony would put out. Um, basically, you'd get this CD, put it in your PlayStation, and you'd get all sorts of uh, demos and interviews and stuff like that that you could peek at and get news on your upcoming latest and greatest PlayStation titles. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Spyro had a little segment before Spyro 1 was released, and I'll talk about it more as I get more of these gems, I don't want to spoil it all right away, still other things to talk about. Uh, in the meantime, we can talk more about Beastmakers. I mentioned before that a lot of these levels are very memorable, some for better reasons than others. Of course, we have treetops right here, I've been hyping that up this entire time. Um, but it, it's overall interesting. It's not crazy magic bullshit like we saw in Magic Crafters, and definitely not the kind of crazy bullshit we'll be seeing in Dreamweavers once we get there, but it has its own unique flavor. It has... Is there a whirlwind here? That's... Maybe not. Maybe I'm going crazy. Oh yeah, if we just climb up here, what am I doing? But it, um... It has a consistency in its design that serves itself very well. And that's something that I don't feel the latter Spyro games do very well. 
Look at Spyro 2. In the first world of Spyro 2, you have all sorts of different locales. And none of them, you know, fit a strict motif. There are just all separate levels with their own separate flavors. Which is fine, it gives much more variety. But I do like how in Spyro 1, this is the... Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but in Spyro 1, you know, we can look at this and say, this is the swamp world. All the levels will be swamp-based. And it gives that little sense of visual continuity that's... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's nice. I'll think of the word later. So there's a key over here. We saw that save earlier, so now we can open that up. And... I don't think that'll be the rest of the gems in the entire stage, but... Oh, well... Oh, can we go over here? Oh, I'll make it! Okay, good. Yeah, there is a whirlwind here. I wasn't going crazy. Hopefully this will take us on our way. Oh yeah, we don't have sparks anymore. That's sad. We need sparks to get those, don't we? God, this is such a great song, by the way. Grab these, will ya? Oh yeah, that was the rest. Okay, so let's head back over to the flight level. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys is an interview that Steve, uh, Stephen, no, oh, God, it has been a long time, Stuart Copeland did um, for PlayStation Underground, and it kind of shows him uh, the way he made his music and we actually get to see a little clip of him actually making a song from the game, and I think it's super interesting. Hopefully you will too. So, we're gonna cut away from that for a moment. And you'll watch that and have some fun, and we'll meet back up here, and we'll head to the flight level. Okay, well, I'm, I, I'm gonna do something which is a, a, a trade secret here, but I have input quantize, which means that I can play it very badly, and it comes back, played very nicely. I can loop those two bars there, so it'll just go around and around and around those two bars. Okay, now let's get some bass going there. Okay, now so there's a bass line. Now let's get some drums happening. Okay, now, now let's get some heavy metal going here. Okay. They pay me for this. And then, of course, you can get into all the uh, cool stuff like, uh, okay, and copy the, the bass part onto other instruments to kind of thicken it up. And then I add <laughs> scary stuff to, you know, Add to it in various different ways. Where is that? Uh... Now this is really where I'm giving away the trade secrets. This is where Mozart would be jumping out of his grave and saying, I want to live in this century, where I transpose that part from there up to there. And it plays that same piece of music. So I've just done a whole transition there, took all those instruments and moved them up that much. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Because the reason I bring all this up and the reason we're doing the flight level first is because the song he made in that video, in that short little thing he did in five minutes, is actually in the game. And it is actually the music that we're going to hear now. And I'll keep quiet. I mean, you can obviously tell it's it. I think it's super cool to see how we made this song, and now it's just like straight up in the game. Um, and I don't know, 
I like how I like seeing people work. So, by the way, before I forget to mention it, uh, this is probably one of the harder, if not the hardest, flight level in the game. Uh, it's very weird in the choices it gives you, how, how you want to start off, because you have to kind of juggle the boats and the arches both at once, it can, and it can be kind of difficult, and now we have to juggle these chests and the planes both at once, too. But we're doing pretty well, honestly. I mean, I only practiced this once, and I did a, I did, uh, th I'm doing a much better job now than I did before. Three more, two more. Hopefully they're around here somewhere. We have plenty of time. There we go. Ah, I have to go all around this way and then double back. It won't waste that much time. There we go. All right, I'm kind of surprised that I did that on my first try. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but try again, no thank you. So now we can actually get into the um, the levels themselves, and I think we're going to hit Terrace Village first, because it's kind of the first one you see as you go into the world, so it's probably the one they intend, they intend you to hit first. Okay, there we go. And Terrace Village is probably the least memorable of these stages. Yeah, it's Misty Bog. Uh, not to say it isn't bad, but... Even after I, I talked this up as being full of very unique and memorable stages, uh, Terrace Village is definitely the weaker of the four we'll be seeing. See, we got 400 gems and two dragons, by the way. We are starting to see more and more gems in these stages. Fine by me, more stuff to collect. Levels are getting bigger as well. These enemies are never really a problem. Wait. Oh god, we're actually getting hit. Okay. That was weird. So, Terrace Village, it's it's alright. Uh, how many dragons again? Only two. You saw much more dragons in um, Peacekeepers and Magic Crafters, didn't we? There are definitely more than two a stage. Oh shit, we're back at the beginning. <laughs> it's been a while, I'm a little rusty. Oh god. Okay. Let's get shit back on track here. First dragon, let's just go to them. They'll probably just talk about electricity, I think. Watch out, Spyro. The Norks in these parts have discovered the power of electricity. And it really stings. Discovered the power of electricity in their. Oh god. Well, let's see, they, were... they are listening to some music though. So at least they're using electricity for more than just weapons. Oh, didn't see you there. Hiding behind the guy. So we... there are rockets uh, littered all around the village, and we'll be kind of setting those off as we see them. Uh, because there are these safes all over the place, too. There might be a safe that needs a key? Nah, I don't think so. Oh, whoop. The uh, electric pads can be a little tricky if you don't know the exact timing or if you dive in at the wrong moment. Good job, Spyro! One day you'll be able to tell all the dragons about your amazing adventures. Sure, but what I'd really like to do is get out of this swamp. Sure, what I'd really like to do is get out of this shitty place. I can't believe people call this place home. Really sensitive. The Spyro Kid. Anyway. Oh, what happened there? First, we need sparks back. Hello. Hello. 
trying to think of other things, because up to this point, I've been kind of peppering the place with little bits of Spyro knowledge. Don't really want to get into, like, the Legends series yet, if I don't have to. That's a conversation. God damn it. I'm getting lost. That's not a conversation I want to have. But I suppose we can talk a little bit about the Legend series, if I remember it correctly. Uh, what happened was that Insomniac either sold the rights or lost the rights, and they were eventually passed to uh, a couple places that maybe made the GBA games, Season of Ice and Season of Fire. I forget exactly how that went down, but essentially the IP got left with Sierra. And what Sierra did with the place was um, reboot the series. Right, right, okay, someone else made Enter the Dragonfly, which was terrible. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about that instead. I don't know if I have already. I hope I haven't. In which case, I might be retreading some ground here, and we're about to die, so we need to get Sparks back ASAP. But, Enter the Dragonfly was the first Spyro game uh, on PS2, the first one to be on the next-gen systems after the PS1. And it was terrible. It was complete shit in a pretty astounding way. It was just glitches everywhere. It was obviously not a product that um, should have been shipped. And it was probably rushed at some point along its development, especially nearing release. Um, all sorts of glitches uh, you can check out. You know, ways to make Spyro swim anywhere, just like glitching through walls, glitching through all sorts of geometry. Um, the loading times were also infamously bad. It's just extremely terrible, up to a minute. Just be go just going between sub areas of a single level. And it might look like I'm going around circles, but there's a reason for this. We have to hit the other uh, roofs. There we go. Anyway, we need to find a chicken so we can get Sparks back. This is going to be bad. So, it was a really bad game. Terrible loading time. Stuart Copeland did do the music, though, and I appreciate what he did, giving the better power of the PS2 hardware to actually make uh, pretty good songs. And the soundtrack for that game is genuinely good. I, I have no problems with it. But, man, everything... I was like... Um, you can tell it was super rushed, too, because there were only, like, nine levels in the thing, and they weren't even that big. Imagine, you know, playing a Spyro game, like, playing Spyro 1, and there were only nine levels. It'd be ridiculous. Uh, I remember getting Spyro. I mean, it's entered the Dragonfly, but as far as we knew, uh, I should get Sparks back, what am I doing? As far as we knew, going in, it was Spyro 4. So I remember um, I was still a wee lad, picking apart birthday, no, it was Christmas, Christmas presents. Oh, hey, we're done. Christmas presents, picking up good old Spyro 4, being psyched out, and um, then I aged and died, because the loading screens were that long. Couldn't even make a save file, it was really sad. So we're done with Terrace Village, we're gonna hit Misty Bog next. And Misty Bog is a level a lot of people remember because of a specific enemy that uh, a lot of people fondly regard. Let's see, where is it? Some chickens, beef sparks back up, it's over here. Alright. Misty Bog. The bass line in the Misty Bog song, as we're about to hear, is actually um, the same bass line. To the point where it's almost the same song as the credits song we'll be hearing at the very end of the game. And it's actually the credit song that is used in every Spyro game on PS1. These aren't the enemies that everyone hates. 
they are memorable. Because, I don't know, they're really unsettling. I don't like them. For one, you're being eaten by this weird plant monster, and two, they make a weird splat noise that I don't think should be made by anything when you flame them. Or charge them. I don't think they can be charged, but you don't want to. These fucking things, here we go. These frogs will fuck your shit up. Especially if you find them in a group, which we will definitely find later. By the way, there were 500 gems here, if I didn't mention that already. That is quite a lot. And this is probably one of the biggest levels in the game. I could be talking out of my ass, I don't actually know. But it definitely seems very large. 16 lives, whoopty. Not like that matters. Oh. This is a good song, by the way. Probably one of the better songs in the game. And we get our first dragon of four. Be on the lookout for attack frogs. They are cold-blooded killers. Attack frogs? And this used to be such a nice swamp. Don't act all confused, Spyro, okay? We just killed, like, four of them? Unless you're not desensitized, in which case I'd be concerned. Oh, wow. Okay, that went badly. Oh, but I missed. I was expecting that hog to stay behind. No, it rushed for me. Jerk. This is real satisfying. Just kill them all in a row. There's a chicken over here. Fucker sleeper. Could take this opportunity to itch my nose. It's itchy. Alright. I wonder what he's listening to. Let's see, it was 1998. It was All Star out by then? Smash Mouth? I feel like that was a, a late 90s thing. Was it mid 90s? I'm not sure. Oh! This is where the series starts. Alright. We, we murdered many things just then. Damon. Thanks for releasing me. It seems like I've been trapped in here since I was your age. No, no. Why? I remember... Uh, gotta go! Dude, it was like... last week that this all went down. You haven't been trapped in here for years. Let's see, I'm wondering if there's anything else to talk about about Enter the Dragonfly. Other than that, it was terrible. Long loading screens, hit upon that. There is a uh, YouTube video. What am I doing? Where am I going? Yeah, from here we just go back to the beginning of the level. There's a YouTube video floating about if you just hit and like, enter the dragonfly, loading screens. Um, you can kind of see how bad they are, and they are atrocious. Like, you think Sonic 06 is bad, and believe me, Sonic 06 is some fucking bad loading screen, but this is just next level all the way through. It is the Sonic 06 of Spyro. At least it didn't have a terrible story. No, we didn't we didn't hit upon terrible stories until a little later. And we can talk about the Legend of Spire uh, series another time. But for now we have to rescue who are you? Zeke. Talk to me. Thank you for releasing me. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that. More frogs. Oh! Okay. Oh shit. We need sparks. I'm not okay. You can't go back. Sweet. We go this alone. Mexican standoff going on over here. Okay. I'm not sure how I lived through that, gonna be honest. Are there really no chickens over here? Weird, scaly chickens? It's like a cockatrice, right? Oh, well, there we go. Ah, we start here anyway, it's not that big of a deal. If 
by the same hog, too. In case you didn't realize it already, this level is quite large. Like I mentioned, it feels like we've been a lot of different places, and we still have, you know, over a hundred gems to go, and there still are a couple areas we have yet to hit. This is the last dragon, at least. Bubba! I'll tell you what to do with those creatures. Smash them, Spyro! Stamp them out and squish them and squash them! <laughs> uh, huh. How about charge them and flame them? We are dragons, after all. I'm gonna be honest, tell me one dragon, tell me one famous dragon, and there are a lot of them that chooses to just, like, charge things. Because most dragons I know of are very large. And, you know, stomping is, is a very valid solution. Oh, fuck me. That almost worked. Wow, okay, there was just a life. Hanging out. Almost missed this as well, so maybe it's a good thing. That we almost died. Some fancy gliding going on here. There we go. And done. still have around 80 or so gems. We still have this little area over here. Plenty of guys to kill. Hopefully we can get them all in one line again. There we go. And I believe this will do it for Misty Bog. And 500. Let's not... Shit. Okay. Gem hunt time. Hopefully this won't take forever, but, uh, who knows, you know. Found it! It was, uh, it was over here. Had a life, too. Alright, we're done with the Misty Bog, so let's head on over to the level exit. And get on with Beastmakers. I have a terrible sense of direction, I don't know if you caught up on that already, but it's true. Alright. Turn this corner. And... Now for a very important thing. moment everyone's been waiting for. I can make my way over there. And, okay, now we need sparks back. Uh, let's find one more chicken. All right, the moments everyone has been waiting for, the top level of this LP, uh, everyone loves it. Let's go to Metalhead. Um, we've done every other level in the Beastmaker's world, so time to confront the boss. And I'm gonna be honest, Metalhead is probably the, uh, not the most exciting boss in this game. He's not great. Oh, by the way, I'll link the full interview um, of Steven... God damn it, I did it again. Stuart Copeland in the description. So, if you want to see that, uh, go check the whole thing out. It, it's super interesting, and as someone who makes music, uh, a lot of the... Uh, this... Oh, I can't speak. A lot of the stuff he says um, is completely true and really does resonate with me. I say resonate with me, that sounds too strong, but like, I agree with it, doesn't sound nearly as powerful. I like the stuff he says. Also, it's a little bit of a funny moment when they talk about the PS1 hardware, and Stuart Copeland talks about how strong the hardware is, and this is the part where I show the part that tripped me up most as a kid. Wow! What a fucking dick! 
He just shot his own dude off the fucking cliff. I'm sorry, man. Okay. Um, Trump me up. Big as a kid. Oh, okay. First off. In every video game. Ever. Very important. Always check under the bridge. There's always something under the bridge. A lot of people say, you know, check behind the waterfall. And that's true too. There's always something behind the waterfall. I know when I was, played Skyrim, I was walking into waterfalls like an asshole whenever I saw them. And there were a lot, because Skyrim had a lot of waterfalls. And there were usually nothing behind those waterfalls. But, um, under the bridge, also very important. Always find stuff under the bridge. I'm trying to think of another example, and I can't, but believe me. Uh, under the bridge in Super Mario 64 in bob on Battlefield, under the bridge at the very beginning of the level there were some coins in case you were hurt, and in a weird thing you could climb on the underside of that bridge. Which is weird because I don't see any reason why you would ever want to do that, but you can. These guys make a weird noise. Only one dragon, right? Yeah, this guy will tell us about that a bit. Sadiki. This big robot is all charged up to meet you. Attacking the power pole should disrupt its power supply. Yeah, so Metal Ed is probably one of the easiest bosses in the game, which is weird because this is World 4 and it should be much harder than this. You just smash these things. And, uh, that's sort of it. Like, he runs away, and you're expecting this to be kind of like, you know, in, in classic boss fight fashion, like every other game ever. You hit a boss three times, maybe four. Um, Metalhead? Nah. None of that jazz going on with Metalhead. Uh, let's see. Times. Two hits! Two cycles of this is all it really takes for him. And, uh, it makes me kind of feel like this level was stopped early. I don't know, it's really anticlimactic. Anyway, hopefully we can wrap up the gems we don't already have. Hopefully most of them are in the safe. Use that key we found under the bridge. There's some stuff over here as well. I don't want to forget. Okay, got it. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, I think most of what we need is going to be in that safe. We don't need too much. Just double checking to see if I got everything over there. I did mess that up when I was practicing these levels. Alright. So like I said before, always check under the bridge, but always check underneath the waterfall. It's true here. Did I say underneath the waterfall and then behind the waterfall? Anyway. Uh, we definitely do not have... I thought this was a 400 gem place, but it was actually 500, so we definitely have more that we need to collect. And it's probably back in the first area, we definitely didn't clear that out as much as we could have. Plus all of this stuff up here, what was I thinking? See, we're closer already. Alright, yeah, we only have 15 to go. Time for a cut, because I don't actually know where the rest are. I suppose it is, so I'll be right back. Found them! They were behind here, sneaky guys. Alright, at least we're near the exit. And with that, cleared every stage in the Beastmaker's world. Next time we're off to Magicraft. No, no, not Magicrafters. Dreamweavers. Next time we're off to Dreamweavers, the fifth world and penultimate world, in fact. So, glad to be back. Videos will be coming a bit quicker now. Uh, we'll actually finish this game. So, I'll see you guys later.